Hi, in this video I'm going to cover a few additional notes on projectiles. One is going to be the maximum range of a projectile, or the angle in which you get a maximum range. Then the range equation, which relates in the initial velocity to the range of a projectile with an example problem. And we're going to discuss how projectiles lead to orbits. So number one, we can fire a projectile at all kinds of different angles. Um, but let's say we want to get the maximum total distance from our, let's say it's a cannon. What? It's a pretty bad cannon. Uh, let, let's just pretend it's a cannon here. What angle do we fire at? Well, you might want to think that you might think that the you want to maximize the time the projectile is in the air, so you fire it pretty straight up. But it turns out you don't get very far that way because the horizontal component of your velocity is not is not very high. So you don't move very far forward. Uh, you might want to fire your projectile at a really shallow angle, a really horizontal angle, because that increases your horizontal velocity. But it turns out you're not in the air for very long because your vertical velocity is so slow. And it turns out that these vertical and horizontal velocities are perfectly balanced at an angle of 45 degrees. So 45 degrees is the angle of maximum range. When you fire at 45 degrees, your projectile will be launched at the maximum, or it will land the maximum distance away, assuming it's landing on flat ground. We're also going to introduce one more equation called the range equation. Uh, the range of a projectile is the horizontal distance traveled by a projectile before or when, let's just say when, it reaches its initial height. So if we think about firing a projectile on flat ground at some angle, we'll call that angle theta, we call its initial velocity u. It forms a parabolic arc and it will hit the ground here. The range then is that horizontal distance. Now if we fire it off a building, for example, the range is still only the distance to when it reaches the initial height. So the range is still only going to be to here. Uh, the equation for the range of a projectile is the initial speed squared times sine of 2 theta over g, where theta is the angle above the horizontal that our projectile is launched. So let's do an example. An artillery cannon has a range of 2450 meters when fired at an angle of 30 degrees above the horizontal. Find the initial speed of the artillery and find the maximum range of the artillery when fired on flat ground. So I can draw a diagram. My artillery is fired at an angle of 30 degrees. At some unknown initial velocity, it doesn't tell us. and It lands some distance away. 2450 meters. Um, but in fact, uh, I am not going to have enough information to solve this using the SUVAT equations. Because if I plug in for x, I can't get a numerical x component of my velocity because I don't have a numerical initial velocity, so that's an unknown. I do know sx, 2450 meters, but I don't know the time, so I can't solve anything for x, at least not easily. Y, I also can't get an initial velocity y, because I don't have a numerical value. I don't know the final velocity. I know the displacement y is equal to zero, because it lands on the ground. Acceleration I do know. And the time I don't know. So I don't have enough information to solve this. Um, actually, I do have enough information to solve this, because I have this extra information, this angle theta, which relates the horizontal component to the vertical component. But you would have to set up a complicated uh, trig identity um, system of equations to solve that. So instead, we're just going to use the range equation. The range is our initial velocity squared, cos, did I say cos? Not cos, sine of 2 theta over g, where g is the magnitude of the acceleration. Um, and the range is just the horizontal displacement. I know everything except for u, so if I want to find the initial speed, I'll just find u. 
Keep in mind, u is the magnitude of the speed. It's not ux or uy. Multiply both sides by g, I get g times range equals u squared sine of 2 theta. Divide both sides by sine of 2 theta, I get g times range over sine of 2 theta equals u squared. And then I take the square root of both sides, I get u equals the square root of g times range over sine of 2 theta. And I'll plug in my number, square root of 9.81, and it's positive because it's the magnitude. My range was 2450 meters divided by sine of 2 times 30. Plug that into a calculator, make sure I'm in degree mode. 9.81 times 2450 divided by sine of 60. Take the square root of that, I get an initial velocity of 167 meters per second. That's my cannon's firing speed. So that's uh, part one. Next, find the maximum range when fired on flat ground. Well, since I know the initial velocity, I could actually use SUVAT and this T-chart to solve it, but I could also just use the range equation because it's asking for the range. Range equals u squared sine 2 theta over g. And we know that the maximum range occurs when theta is equal to 45 degrees. So we just plug in our initial velocity in 45 degrees here. Range equals 167 meters per second squared times sine of 2 times 45, 2 times 45 degrees, divided by 9.81. We get an answer. Plug it into a calculator. Two thousand eight hundred and thirty meters. That's our maximum range. So range equation is quite useful, especially when you aren't given the initial velocity or the initial speed. Last of all, let's think about orbits. Uh, well, when we throw a projectile, usually we think about it going on flat ground. It'll eventually fall and hit the ground. The gravity pulls straight down. But if we zoom out of the Earth on a large enough scale, the Earth actually curves down. So the projectile's eventually going to fall, but the Earth curves down away from it. If we throw a projectile hard enough, it'll curve a little bit around the Earth because the Earth is essentially falling away from it. If we throw it even harder, the Earth will curve down away from it more, and it will go further around the Earth. If we throw it at just the right speed, or even a little bit past the right speed, we can get an orbit, which in where the projectile is continuously falling towards the center of the Earth, but the Earth is falling at the same rate that the projectile is falling, or the Earth is curving at the same rate that the projectile is falling. Um, or at a greater rate, so the projectile goes around an orbit. This is a circular orbit here, and this is an elliptical orbit here. That's all. Hope that was helpful. Bye.